Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Trout Anglers. Today, I have with me Tyler and Sam Wong. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Good, Good you? how are you? I'm doing well. So where are you guys from? Uh, Archbald, Pennsylvania. And we're, I have no idea. where that, Where's that at? You know where Scranton is? Yes. We're about 15 minutes from there. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, we chat a little bit on Facebook, and uh, I see uh, your daughter Sam here caught herself a, a nice size trout there. Oh, uh, th this ain't my daughter here. Oh, that's not your daughter? No, this is my girlfriend. Holy cow. God bless you, brother. I thought <laughs> that was your – oh, man. No. No, you had a jackpot my, there. She's she's a she's a keeper. It's like the trout. Thank you about that. No, but the the girl and the little girl in the video was my sister, but she's at softball practice, and they live in Sweet Valley with my parents. Oh, okay. Yeah. But she, was, was she in pictures too that you sent me to? Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Now, are you are you an avid? Uh, do you like to fish as well? I like to fish, not as much as Tyler, but I do like to go with him. You know, the last time I went fishing, and I took my wife. She actually sat in the truck. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't get her out with me. No, I like to go. I mean, he has to bribe me with snacks, but I'm learning to love it. Very cool. Very cool. So there's no soap operas involved, right? You just have to, you have to bring snacks. Yep, yeah. that's it. Very cool. Snack. <laughs> <laughs> so Tyler, how did you get involved with the trout fishing? Who introduced you? My father. Uh... I was probably three or four years old and he would take us down at the time we lived in Shikshini, Pennsylvania, and he would take me down to a place called the Riverlands. And it's uh, right outside of Berwick by uh, the nuclear plant. But uh, we'd go down there and fish and everything. And then uh, we moved out to Sweet Valley, Pennsylvania, where my parents live now. And then uh, we started fishing a little stream called Harvey's Creek. And, you know, we, I, you know, we'd get in fishing there and everything. And as I got older, 12, 13, the days he couldn't stay out longer, he'd just go drop me and my brother off. And we'd fish the head of the stream all the way down to 29. But then uh, I was about 15 years old. And we hit the delayed harvest stretch, me and my brother. And we seen this guy fly fishing. And I've never seen it before that day. Me and my brother kind of looked at each other like, what is he doing? Like, you know, like I've, not, I've never seen anything like that. So uh, we went up and asked him some questions and he gave us some flies and everything, gave us some pointers on what to do and everything. And I fell in love with it ever since. And Sam, how about you? Uh, so when I started dating Tyler, he was all about fly fishing. And at first I was not about it because I, I wasn't very good at it. But, you know, I knew how to fish on a spinning rod. My dad had taking me out on the boat a lot and then um you know Tyler actually sat down we practiced in the yard and then my casting got better and now that I'm catching fish I actually love it you know I, I just just like Tyler explained you know seeing somebody fly fish um I, I usually go fishing every opening day um I go out in like the Percocet area Hellertown that's where my, my buddy's from and there's this one guy I see him every year and it's it's just such an art, and it's it's so awesome and graceful looking. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and you know once he comes by, forget it. The fish forget us, and they go to him, and it's just it's all game game over for us. You know? Yeah. Well, th that's how I got my sister interested in fly fishing as well. Uh, uh, I think it was about maybe four years ago now. I think she was maybe ten or eleven years old, and I brought both. You know, because I wanted to introduce it to her, like fly fishing, but I also wanted to know, like, get, get, get her into like the spinning con conventional gear fishing. So I started a teacher on a conventional gear and everything, and she was fishing and everything. And I bumped up a little bit above her and I started fly fishing. She's like, Well, I want to do that. I'm like, All right, I'll teach you how to do that. And then uh, I got her into that, and now she she's in love with it as well. So let me, let me ask you, how, how old were you when you first went fishing? When I first went fishing with any type of gear? Either were. Three years. <laughs> Three years old, four years old, wow. maybe. Wow. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. How about you, yep. Sam? Oh, you, you met when you met Tyler, right? No, I I fished for years with my dad. My dad loves to fish, but I was never like you know that into it but probably since i was five i mean he used to take us out on the boat all the time 
Now, do you guys just fish for trout or do you guys do other fishing as well? Oh, oh no. We like to uh, go up to Pulaski, New York a lot. I don't know if you ever heard of there. We like to do our fair share of salmon fishing, steelhead fishing, and then, uh, you know, hit some tributaries of Lake Ontario. And then uh, in the summer, we'll go out for smallmouth on the Susquehanna. Really, whatever, whatever I think's best for that time of year because like in the summer like when the streams start getting warm and it's too hot i try to leave the trout alone you know because they're not you know they're already struggling to survive the water is getting shallow and everything so i try not to mess with them too much and i'll go hit the rivers for like small mouth or musky or something you know it's, it's funny you mentioned Pulaski. i don't know if you guys had seen my first uh, my first video with the other gentleman but uh he mentioned the same thing he's up he lives up in new york and uh he mentioned about Pulaski. So what we're going to probably have to do is set a trip and we'll all meet up in Pulaski and, and, and do one of those float boats. Sounds, sounds great with me. I, I love it up there. She actually, this, I took her up for her first time fly fishing was in October and her, her first fish she caught on her own was a coho. And man, it was phenomenal. Usually when you catch something that big, it's one and done. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So let no, me but, ask you this. People, I didn't mean to cut you off. People mention that that trout fishing is an addiction. Is it an addiction for you guys? Oh, 100%. If you ask her about how much I talk about it, I watch about it, I'm reading, I'm, I'm trying to keep up to date with everything. I'm always trying to like figure out what's best for the fish, how I can improve my fishing. Like it's literally all I talk about, all I send her on the phone. Like she probably gets really tired with it, but like I just can't get it out of my head, you know? I come home, him and the dogs are watching YouTube videos on fishing. <laughs> I, I do want to say, and I'm going to put this out there for the video for you guys, TNS Fishing, am I correct? That, that's your guys' YouTube channel? Uh, it's uh, TNS Outdoors. TNS Outdoors. I did. You know what? I, the, the thing you said earlier, I thought it was a picture when you said it was a video. I was actually at work, so I had to put it on low and then played it. Amazing video. So anybody watching this, hit Tyler up on YouTube, send him a subscription, and uh, check out. He's got some really cool videos. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, brother. So, um, I mean, I lost my notes here. That's why I keep leaning over. I keep trying to get my stuff. <laughs> so now, do you guys just straight up fly fish now? Is it? I mean, is that it? Pretty much. Pretty pretty much. Um, the only time we're really conventional gear is like if we're smallmouth fishing or something like that. But this year, I want to get into fly fishing for smallmouth. But like, we live real close here to like uh, the Lackawanna and the Lehigh. And then we got like little streams and stuff like that around here. So like it's, there's a bunch of opportunities to fly fish many, many different streams down here and be very productive at it. And like, as what's nice is, you know, you can come to the South branch Tonkanic here. It's, it's a delayed harvest and you can fish that year round. And like, if someone really wants to go learn how to fly fish, like that's the place to do it. You know, it's open. And then, like, you really take someone there, nice open water. You're, get, like, almost pretty much guaranteed to catch a fish. Now, up there, is it um, – is there a lot of native trout, too, or is it, is it, is it stocked as well? Um, there – now, once you get over towards my parents in Sweet Valley, there are a lot of – that's more – they're, like, more in the mountains there. And there's a lot of spring-fed spring fed streams there. And I – there are a lot of streams with uh, brook trout, but native brook trout, but I probably haven't fished for them in five or six years because I try not to mess with them too much. You know, I like to see them make a really good, strong comeback. Very cool. Now, Sam, when you started fly fishing, was it difficult for you or was it natural? Did it all come in stride? No, it was very difficult. <laughs> and there was many times that I sat on the rocks and put my fly pole down and said, I'm done. <laughs> I, I you know what it's like I said it's, it's it is such an art and and here in Philadelphia unfortunately I don't I don't have the opportunity once once the trout season's over everything's gone like you may have some stragglers left over but our creeks down here they're they're tree lined so there's you know I, like I said I, I wind up spending more time trying to get my fly out of the tree than I would be putting it in the water you know yeah so are you guys uh all straight up catch and release for the most part, yeah, I, I probably haven't kept a fish. Now, like, see, like, this upcoming Saturday, like, on the opener, my grandfather, he passed away in my senior year of high school. Every opening day of trout, we'd keep 
five or six fish, then cook them over the fire that day over tinfoil and everything. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not crazy about trout, but just to keep up with tradition, you know, on the first day of trout, I'll go out, keep one fish, cook it over a fire, and eat it, and that's it. That's about the only time I'll keep a fish. Now, how, how did your guys uh, mentor fishing day? You mentioned you had your daughter out. How did mentor fishing go, and, and how did she like it? Oh, it was, it was phenomenal. I, I had my sister, a neighbor kid out, I had my little brother's girlfriend's little sister out. There was probably, we had four or five kids with us. And what was nice is, you know, a lot of times with this, when they, Pennsylvania introduced this uh, youth mentor, a lot of guys and older adults look at it as just for them to get out and go fishing earlier, which is something I'm completely against. The only time I had to rod my hands was if they asked me to help them cast, fix something other than that. It was all them. And they, you know, they did phenomenal. And like, it was a cool aspect because you had two, three kids wanting to learn how to fly fish. You had two kids that just want to use conventional gear. So like you're all over the place and like, it's, there ain't nothing better than seeing a kid land a fish. They want to get it in their hands, that big smile on their face. You know, I, I, again, watching a lot of these, uh, uh, videos put up on Facebook, like you said, when they start this mentor, um, some of these guys, you know, had videos of, of their, you know, their sons or daughters reeling the fishes. Like you said, man, their, their face lights up like a Christmas tree. So, uh, it, it is, it's, it's, I, I kudos to PA for, for, you know, uh, you know, bringing this out. And, uh, you know, like you said, the sad part is there, there is a lot of guys out there that, you know, uh, are taking advantage as well and, 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 you know, takes away from the kids, you know? Yeah. No. Yeah. But like, I, I think, I think it's coming around now. I think more people are realizing, you know, like, you know, this day is for the kids and they, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not nagging the guys either who want to fish too. Like if your kid's old enough to fish on his own and everything, have at it and go ahead and fish. I'm just like, like, for instance, we've seen a guy there with, like, a kid. He was, like, maybe three, two, three years old. And the kid's just sitting on the bank in, like, the little sway thing, and he's just there fishing. And that's when I was kind of like, really? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Well, I got hammered. Um, I, I, I put a video out, and uh, I walked in the, the Penny Pack Woods area here. So it's literally right around the corner from my house. And uh, the reason why I was doing it, of course, I was recently diagnosed with cancer and I was doing a cancer walk. So Party. I see, uh, yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. Um, so I, I see two guys fishing. One guy had a kid with him. So, you know, I walked over and, well, from a distance, I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's it's not, uh, you know, ain't ready for fishing yet. Guys didn't give me no problem, you know what I mean? But man, the people on, on, on these Facebook pages, they hammered me. Why don't you leave yeah. them alone? Da, da, da. I had people threatening me and stuff. Oh, dude, it was crazy and like that's another thing where like when i get in the fish i try to like not because you do have your guys out there no matter what you say you can say the sky is blue they're gonna say no it's orange and they're gonna hammer you for it i try to stay away from like conversations like that because like i'm not like i don't like you know getting hammered on and i don't want to hammer back you know it just fires me up and i don't want to ruin my day over someone else like and, if, and like I watched your video because I went through your YouTube and I was watching some of your videos and what you did was right. You know, you told them and like, and let's say if conflict were to happen, you just back away from it, you know? Yeah. The funny thing is, is people don't realize that the game commission and, and, and the water conservationists, they're on this page. They're on these pages. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it, it had to be 20 minutes to a half an hour after I put that video up, I got an inbox on my Facebook. Hey, I'm so and so from the Pennsylvania Game Commission. What's the location? Bum, bum, bum. And so I told him, you know what I mean? That in Philadelphia, them, them guys are probably going by the time they got there anyway. But you know, people don't realize these 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 people monitor the pages, you know. Oh. So, so uh what let's talk about your guys' best day on the water. What day would have? What what happened? Definitely up in Pulaski, New York, the second time I took her up. Because the first time we went up, we kind of got skunked. And, you know, I, I talked it up for her. I'm like, we're probably going to catch, you know, five, six, seven, eight fish today. And we get up there and we, we, we didn't even hook into one. And I kind of, I kind of, I feel like I put a bad taste in her mouth. So I'm like, all right, let's go up next weekend. I'm like, I know next weekend's going to be good. There's rain's coming in this week. The water level is going to come up a little bit. 
So we go up and literally from first light to dark, we were, we had a fish on every 10, 15 minutes. And it, it, it was, it was, it was phenomenal. And I had our brother up there with me and everything. It was every time we go up there, like it's almost guaranteed something crazy is about to happen. And like something real memorable. The last time we were up there, we went up for steelhead about a month ago. I buried my truck in freaking about foot high snow and had, had to get some people to come pull me out. You know, she wasn't too happy about that. Neither was I, but it, it just, every time we go up there, something happens, you know? That, how about you, Sam? What would have been your best day? That I would say was probably my best day. Um, only because, you know, he was casting for me. He'd let me reel the fish in. He'd let me fight the fish. And then he finally let me go on my own. And I kept getting snagged on rocks. I'm like, oh, I think I have one. I think I have one. He, and then he got mad. He's like, okay, she doesn't have one. And then I really did have one. I was like, Tyler, I have one. He's like, no, you don't. And then he saw it jump out of the water. And he's like, oh my gosh, she really has one. And it was a coho. He was like, I've been fishing this for years and I've never caught a coho and you cast and you don't even know what you're doing and you caught one. So what, what was the, what was the measurements on that? Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't remember, but if I had to take a guess, I'd probably say every bit of 24, 25 inches. Wow. <laughs> now, <laughs> any time during the course of reeling that in, did you say, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to do. And he's telling me, he's like, oh, cup the reel, do this, do that. And I'm like, I don't know what you're telling me to do. I'm just going to let it sit here. Well, see, like what's, what's crazy is uh, like, so literally like she was saying, like every two, like every two cash, like, oh, I got one. And she'd pick up and her rod would be bent, but it wouldn't be moving. I'm like, no, nah, you're snagged. I'd walk over and get her out. And then she'd do it again. So like an hour goes by. I walk down probably another 10, 15 yards from her. And she goes, Ty, I really got one this time. And I didn't even bother to look. I'm like, right, right, right. <laughs> and <big>. then, yeah. <laughs> and then next thing I hear like a fish jumping and everything. I was like, dang she really does have one and i went running up there and the fish is you know he's fighting like crazy and i'm like telling her what to do and you can tell like she's getting like real nervous so i just kind of just be quiet and just let her do whatever she had to do to get the fish very cool so mo yeah. most people like you said trout fishing to, fishing in itself is, is an addiction but when it comes to trout season it's it's almost like christmas i mean quote me if i'm wrong but no. uh everybody has a tradition when it comes to trout fishing whether it's camping out you know whatever What's your guy's tradition when it comes to the night before and even the day of uh, trout fishing? Well, I'm trying to see. It's probably been about two years now, but ever, ever since then, me, my dad, and my brother, and whoever else would go with us, and up until my grandfather passed away, that morning, we'd go to a little place called the Red Rooster. It's a little breakfast joint right there. We'd all meet there eat our breakfast and we'd get we'd get to the stream at like 6 30 you know an hour and a half before you can even cast and we just sit there and you know talk drink our coffees and everything and then we would start there and work our way down to the bridge you know and that it's probably every bit a good five six hours of fishing and then uh like i said we'd all keep a trout or how many ever we all wanted and then we'd all cook it over the fire that day and you know then you know like we'd all sit there and eat it and just kind of just talk about whatever was going on in our lives at that time you know it i wouldn't call it like your normal tradition i'm more like a lot of people they go to camps or like they camp out by the fire but like there's something like you know like it means a lot to me you know because like once you start getting like your grandparents passing away and you see your parents getting older and stuff like that like the little things matter you know mm -hmm. how about you sam what kind of traditions you guys have Honestly, I don't, I mean, I remember when I was younger, you know, it would always be like, my dad would get the boat ready for a few months. He'd make sure that we all had the right pools. He'd have extra for me because I'd get everything stuck and break my line. So he would always, you know, like he was always so excited to go. And then we'd get me and my mom would get our folding chairs. We would have like matching bucket hats and we'd go out fishing. So I mean, it's just kind of like that was a way to spend time with each other and, you know, kind of relax and not be running around like crazy all the time. Very cool. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people don't realize I, I tried to do a video before on what, my YouTube channel and uh, 
just having guys come out, even with hunting, you know, about talking about, you know, uh, hunting camp or fishing camp, because a lot of these guys, like you mentioned, your grandfather, that are no, they're no longer with us anymore. Man, the stories those guys probably have. Oh, my God. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a, uh, that, there's a hunting camp. We have, well, we, I mean, we're kind of still a part of it, but like a lot of the, like I said, old timers aren't with us no more. And, you know, a lot of people don't go up no more, but we had a little hunt cabin in Red Rock, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you ever heard of there. It's by Ricketts Glen State Park. But um, at that time, Buck opened up on that on a Monday after Thanksgiving. He'd go up on a Friday and everyone would sit around there. And, you know, they'd play cards and the kids would be in the other room and everything. And then there was this old, Oh, what was this guy's name? I forget his name, but he would bring like these pickled hot foods and he, he'd be like, how hot could a cucumber be? Or how hot could a, could a cauliflower be? Like they just bring some crazy stuff up, you know, and just kind of just like live in the moment really like little things that you tell someone else, they're, they're look, they look at you like, okay, how's that fun? But when you're in a moment of doing something like that, you can't ask for anything better. So uh, what, what kind of setup do you guys have? I have a Reddington run um, for trout. It's a three, four weight. And I use a Reddington classic trout, nine foot, three weight rod. Um, we, uh, we typically Euro nymph or sight nymph. We're uh, not your traditional Euro nymphers. You know, everyone's, they get that extra liter and everything and, you know, they tight line it, but a lot of the places we fish, you know, we fish like little eddies, or, you know, backwater. Or... So like, you can't really tight line your nymphs coming down the water because, you know, the stream ain't pulling it. But uh, yeah, and she has a Lansom Water, Lansom Waterworks, forget the name of it, three weight as well on a five weight max catch rod. And I set, set hers up the same way. We use, you know, we'll use a 3X leader and we'll tie off to a 6X, 7X tippet. And then we'll tie two nymphs at the bottom of that. Very cool. Very cool. You know, since I don't fly fish, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but I do want to get out there. So anyway, every what's, what's, what's a fishing trip without a blunder, some kind of a folly or something like that? Everyone's probably had one. When you guys go out fishing, what was the most memorable blunder that you guys ever experienced? First time I took He's her giving up you the salmon. eye, too, so you better tell the right story. <laughs> the first time I went up Salmon River, uh, you know, she said that, like, she's gone fishing and done stuff like that. So I was like, I figured out, so like, she's, you know, used to walk in the water, you know. She never really told me what type of fishing. So we're right above the town bridge there in Pulaski, you know, where that's at sharp corner it's all rapids and everything but uh we're walking through some pretty like it's moving that water is moving and you know i get to go and i'm going i'm going up around a tree and like hey be careful slippery rock here you know we'll get walking i look back and she's like stuck in one spot and her tongue's like touching the corner of her lip like this i'm like what are you doing she's like i can't move I'm like, what do you mean he can't move? She's like, the water is, every time I take a step, the water pushes me backwards. And, like, she started getting, like, real frustrated and everything. So I thought she was just messing with me, so I kept walking up a little more. Then eventually, like, she fell, and there was this old guy, older guy there, and he, was like, helped her up and everything, and she came up and told me. And I'm like, there ain't no way. But I look back, like, the older guy waved up. Like, it, it was hilarious. And then, like, I was like, then I was like, all right, we got to stay out of the faster moving water. All right, well, now, what about you? <laughs> what'd you do i'm sh good he didn't realize that you know it might only be up to his hips but that's almost like up over my waders so i was like really struggling and then that same day actually he gave me a pair of waders to use before <laughs> i had my own and you know we're walking and i told him i'm like tyler something's really stabbing my foot and he's like you're fine and i'm like no like i think there's like a hook in my foot and he's like, there's not a hook in your foot. You have waders on. So literally he made me walk the whole day. Like it was like a whole six hours. We were on the water and then we are stopping for lunch. So I take my waders off and my whole bottom of my foot is all bloody. And there's a whole pack of hooks in my waders. Uh, 
Did that follow up with a tetanus shot too? Uh, um, actually, it did. I, I'm a nurse, so I work in a hospital, so it was easy to get. Very cool. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. So, uh, hey, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming on. Is there anybody you want to give a shout out to? Uh, Bro Broken Tippet. They're out of they're out of BC, Canada. Um, they're awesome people. They you know they gave us like these free sweatshirts and everything, and they're just really kind people. Any any questions you have? They'll, they'll answer honestly, you know, they're not one of those guys who, you know, they decide to keep secrets and everything and they only give you a little bit of information. They'll give you the whole nine on everything you want to, you know, learn about. That's, that's definitely who had uh, their Instagram page. I think it's just broken tip it, but they are very phenomenal people. Very cool. And Sam, how about you? Anyone to give a shout out to? Um, honestly, Tyler does a lot of the Instagram and stuff. So I don't really know much about that, um, but I'd say broken time. I mean, they gave me a sweatshirt. They always give us nice shout outs. It's pretty good. Yeah, don't forget everybody, TNS Outdoors on uh, Instagram and YouTube. Go ahead and check Tyler out and you got Sam and, and his kids out there fishing. And guys, again, I wanted to thank you guys for uh, you know spending some time away from the family to uh, join me on this uh, second episode. Um, I wish you guys all the best of luck on opening day and uh, stay safe. Tight lines. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. All right, you guys take care. You too. Bye-bye.